we want to think about gold. This is an episode that I was thinking about for a while. I think investing money, investing in assets, thinking about risk, thinking about re returns, you you have to at least have an opinion about gold. You don't have to like it, and we don't like it at Orange Capital Partners, but you have to have an opinion about it. I think it helps also organize your thoughts around assets, around value, around things like that. So before before I go there, let me uh, just give an update. Uh, this is the Not Even Wrong podcast. It's July 3rd, 2020, and this is Krim Delco. Uh, it is July 3rd, so we are observing July 4th today. So the market is closed and there is no update. However, I made a slight mistake yesterday, so I want to correct that. I said that uh, our fund is up 95% year to date and the S&P is down 3%, so we outperformed by 98%. And then I gave an example of what that means. I illustrated that. And what, that, what, what I did was I said, uh, we start with $100. So we have $100 and the S&P has $100 on January 1st, 2020. We are now worth $195 and the S&P is worth $97. This is what outperforming by 98% actually means. And I made a slight mistake yesterday about that, so I just wanted to correct that. So let's get back to gold. What is actually going on with gold? Uh, some people say it should be worth 5,000. Other people say, I hate it, I hate it. Few people actually say it should be worth less. Now I wanna go out here and say that I think in the next five years, gold is gonna be worth less than the $1,800 per ounce today. And that's a function of deflation that we expect to happen in the next couple of years. It's a function of the zero re real long-term rates in the US. And it's also a function of an increased level of disruption that we expect to happen in the US economy. Let me elaborate on this. First, let's start with the zero real yield. Uh, measured by the Treasury Inflation Protected Securities or TIPS, the 30-year tips right now give you a 0% yield. So if you give the government 30-year money, you're expected to get nothing but your principal back. That's a fact. That's a price point in the market. So we don't need to discuss that further. Now let's look at gold. The one purpose gold has had for the last 5,000 years has been to protect people from inflation. Let me elaborate a little bit. So wealthy people sit down 5,000 years ago or something, I don't know, let's say 5,000 years, and say, guys, we all are in a privileged position to have money that we don't need right now. So we have what's called capital. And now we have to find a way to secure the value of that capital. Now, some people, they say, well, how about you buy a house? How about you buy... Um, a, a part of my business, etc., cetera. And, and they're all like, no, 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 no. I don't trust your house. I don't trust your business. Let's define something that we all agree with is always going to have value. And then they come up with gold. Why? Because it's, it's a metal that just has certain properties that, that, you know, yield that kind of, you know, quality. So gold, in a sense, is what Bitcoin, what, what all these Bitcoin people think uh, is such, a, so, you know, the, the future of money and all that. It's this decentralized store of value. The only difference is gold is not like a virtual currency. It's a currency that evolution has created through, 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 through millions of years of tectonic pressure and, and all that stuff. So but in the end, it's a scarce asset that everybody agrees is valuable. And here's the problem with gold. And I, and I just want to put that out there and then discuss why, from a logic perspective, I think gold has the potential to decline in value in the next five years. Gold is a value that is recursive in nature. Gold is valuable because everybody accepts to buy it at a higher price or everybody expects gold to at least hold, if not be worth higher than today. 
Everybody expects gold to be at least worth, if not higher than today, because gold has value. So there's a recursive argument in the essence of, of gold. And it has worked for, as I said, for 5,000 years it has worked because people have accepted there was no better alternative and therefore people have accepted gold as a store of value. But let me be clear, it always depends on all these people. The contract between you and the rest of all the other wealthy people is, I'm going to give you cash, you give me gold, and you, you being everybody else that is in the position, everybody else, every, every other rich person in the world is always going to be ready to buy that gold back from me at or even higher the price that I paid today. This is a recursive argument. Now it has worked. If you go back 100 years, in 1920, the ounce of gold was worth $20. Today it's $1,800. That's a 90x. That is 4.5% compound over, over 100 years. I would say that's roughly what inflation was over the last 100 years. Probably, probably a little bit more than inflation. Just measure that. If I look at a, at a Model T, in 1920 cost maybe $500. So 90X on $500 is about $45,000. So I would say you can get a decent car for about $50,000 today, the same way that the Model T in 1920 must have been, you know, a, a, a great car, a decent car. It wasn't a luxury vehicle or anything like that, but it certainly was a liberating asset to own uh, people were able to move around, etc. So, so, you know, and, and there's a lot of other ways to measure inflation, of course, but I would say that gold has held up very well as a protector of inflation. Now, if we expect the next five years and further, but let's let's just keep it at five years to be deflationary, well, then by by just by by logic, gold should not keep increasing in value; it should decrease. If if it increases with inflation. Well, then it should decrease with deflation. It can't go up both ways. That would be very difficult to understand. Now, why do we expect deflation? What, what's happening here? And I think that's directly related to the third point. We said that we expect a higher level, a higher degree of disruption to come upon us in the economy. Now, what is disruption? Disruption as defined by Clayton Christensen, is a theory of competitive response. And in plain English, disruption always has the result that new people come to the table. Power structures get disrupted. New, more people get access to better assets. In plain English, the cost of living come down. The more disruption you have, the more value the economy creates for everybody. Some people get very rich, but everybody profits from disruption. Disruption is real economic growth. And therefore, the more disruption you have, the, the, the more affordable things become. And therefore, inflation, as we measure it today, should, should go down or be negative. So the more disruption you have, the less inflation you have. And we expect disruption to accelerate and therefore we expect a deflationary period in the next couple of years. And with deflation, we expect gold to depreciate in value. So as a conclusion, I think the fundamental thought here is that gold is a very good inflation protector. Gold is the inverse of disruption because disruption is the inverse of inflation. The more inflation you have, the less disruption. The more disruption you have, the less inflation. It's, it's, a, it's a law of economics or, or kind of like a law of nature almost. And with more disruption, you have less inflation, you have deflation. So if I have $1,800 today, those $1,800 will afford me a lot more in the next 5, 10, 20 years if I have more disruption. And therefore, the argument goes, we have more disruption, deflation, and hence a depre depreciating value of gold. Thank you.